Dude, you got any gel or something? Yeah, I know you have gel. I don't have fucking gel. You always used to use gel when you have longer hair. I used to. Red does. Is it coming? Oh, where's the gel? You look fucking nuts. You fucking Jason's an asshole. Dude. Well, quite honestly, I really don't like you or Jason. <laughs> this doesn't, it's just gonna like, well, it's, yeah, it's not gonna stay anywhere because you're just putting water. I need to sleep on it for 10 hours. That is beautiful. Very 80s. Not 80s enough. Alright, I'm good to mine. Oh, dude, check this out. Yeah, when are we playing with them? Oh my god, that's my heart. Look at that. Look at that. This kind of represents us pretty accurately here. Oh, the two foot machine guy. <laughs> we had nothing he's to do not. with that. But <laughs> they're almost. Well, J Jason's got this. He's got the remember that one yeah, level where yeah. he has the tooth. I don't know how to design that, but if I find them tonight, then I'm really. Yeah, hey, I'm glad that we got the. Yeah, we got the front thing. thing. So cool. Now this one too, dude. <laughs> All right, this hair thing's a disaster. Um, I think toilet water is a little more. Um, Well, how does Special Dental Team form? Well, I believe we formed uh, last summer, which would be the summer of 2002. And I was going to go to Japan. I got accepted to go to a university uh, in Japan, uh, but I turned it down because the amount of money was just too high. I didn't want to take out any loans. So around that time, uh, John Adams asked me to play in Hoser if I'd like to play bass because. Um, their guitar player, Mike Bauman, wanted to play guitar. So I thought that'd be great. Uh, I really liked Hoser's music, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to get back into playing. Now at the same time, since I found out I wasn't going to Japan, I thought uh, I'd really like to start a project with John and Hoser's drummer, Jason Campbell, <clears throat> just like a, a three-piece. And so we'd toss that idea around, and Jason was... Uh, he was interested, so so uh, after uh, you know I found out I wasn't going to Japan, uh, we thought, okay, well we're going to make this happen. We're going to do this. Originally, it was a side project of um, of Hoser, which was uh, my project, um, but we wrote an album over that summer on vacations. Uh, a special Donald team wrote an album over that summer, and. It became clear that we were a lot more organized than Hoser was, so it, Hoser just kind of fizzled out. We were looking for jobs, I believe, right after school had ended, and we were searching on the internet for some jobs, and we saw a like an ad that said, you know, come join our special dental team. So since we didn't have a name for the band, we thought, you know, how appropriate. This sounds nice. It just sounds nice to say. Special dental team, special dental team, right? Kind of has that sound that uh, makes it appealing. I think it's fun to say.
is actually the, uh, the very first thing that was taped at the beginning of all the sessions. Was, uh, after we got the mics all set up and running, you guys were just jamming and I uh, just took a, a test to see if it was all working out. And you kind of, I don't think you knew I was doing anything, so you just kind of jammed on for a couple minutes. But then when it ended, you decided that you just started and actually grabbed the master take of the uh, nail bog, so...
think it's amazing that people even liked us when we started doing this band. I expected to like play out and people would just be like, ah, I don't get it, and just like stand there with a blank look on their face and walk away, you know, but that wasn't the reception that we had. So I've seen other like bands that do similar things, like a lot of long instrumental songs and whatnot, and people just don't get it. So I was expecting that reaction, but it wasn't like that at all. I was very surprised. Pleasantly surprised. First time I saw Special Dental Team, I believe it was at the Marxist Enlightenment Club at Grand Valley State University, which is still a prominent and well-rounded uh, liberal education school. Um, I really, I really dug what they were doing. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was something special. And we actually played a show there. I'm a member of a, a, a band that used to be around that is no more called Frenchy Perlis Organization. And uh, we got up on stage thinking we were going to rock everybody out. And uh, I knew after I saw Special Dental Team that our mission was a huge failure because those guys just rocked my ass off. There was one concert at Scarlet's Home that I particularly enjoyed. I believe everyone dressed up with white tank tops with it and they had blood all over everywhere. <laughs>
theme for the first release was to be vacations. And so each piece or song that we would write was to coincide with maybe a city or, uh, I don't know, a country, uh, kind of a vacation in that area. Off of vacations, I'd have to say that Spank Party Pillow Fight is probably my favorite song. Uh, Jamie arranged most of it, and um, I think it's really well well put together piece of music. Um, he came up with the bass line, and uh, uh, then I wrote the keyboard part, and Jason wrote the drum part. <laughs> One of the songs uh, in Tango was actually taken from what was going to be our second album, which was going to be uh, pieces inspired by artists, uh, visual artists. And so the in Tango piece is uh, taken from and arranged from the in influence of Toshio Saiki, a Japanese uh, artist. And I think if I had to pick a favorite song from Vacations, I think at this point it would be... Uh, it would be that piece in tango. It's really beautiful uh, improv starts the piece, and uh, I just love the feeling of, of the piece. Uh, it's difficult, and uh, it's uh, in, uh, just very, very fun to play, very fun piece to play for a, for a bassist. <laughs>
Um, so after that, we, we played out some shows and got some really, really great, uh, really great reception to our music. So we started working on our second batch of songs. And then for that batch of songs, it was interesting because we just didn't, didn't want to rush into like, okay, well, we're going to have to make some tightly knit uh, project. Like, this is going to be the theme now for this project. Uh, instead, it was like, well, we don't really know what we want to do. So let's make this next project focus around kind of indeterminacy or uncertainty, if you will. And uh, so I guess what flowed from that was the title of the second album, uh, the indeterminacy of existence and so each piece we wrote we kind of just kind of went with it just kind of wrote we didn't really have the vacations theme in mind anymore and our visual uh, live presentation shifted as well so with vacations we kind of wore some Hawaiian looking uh, outfits and uh, with the interminacy project I think John began wearing the rooster killer outfits and I think I, I started wearing like a straw hat and some, some glasses. I really don't know why. Now, it, was, it was during the fall of 2002 that we met. Um, we played at a benefit concert. It was one of our first shows. Our second show ever was at this um, Marxist Enlightenment Society benefit concert, which is a group that I was involved in um, during my last year at Grand Valley. State University, and we played at this benefit concert, um, and I had organized the benefit concert, and I, f I had found a few bands, um, one of which was Frenchy Perlis, um, who we saw that night with with the they had a seven piece band that night, uh, and it was it was a very good show, and um, and they really liked our music too. And Alex, the keyboard player and guitar player from Frenchy Perlis, sort of, we got to know him, and and he he helped us out with um, with recording. So uh, I don't. When, when was that anyway? The Marxist show at GBSU? October tenth. What year? Twenty out two. Twenty out two. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, do you remember our, our initial... That was, that was about our worst possible show. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> but we thought we were going to go there and just fucking... And throw down. Throw and down. We were like, everybody's like, dude, that old team, man, they're better than two. And then, yeah, and we were like, we were like, whatever, man, whatever. These bands, like... We, Dental Team was the only contender at this show that we were, and everybody else I'm sure was like, yeah, we're playing the Marxist show. We were like, dude, we're gonna kick everybody's ass, you know. We yeah, thought we had the next new thing. Everybody who was our fans. But, we, but two or three days later, we played it afterwards. With we invited, and we invited on, on the basis of their performance we because they were so us. amazing, and we wanted somebody to just make us look good. I think is what it's it was. But they were just man. And we didn't even care at that point. We that just was, wanted to see him play again. That was just vacations too. That wasn't any. Yeah, any that was stuff. like I think that was that was the second performance. Maybe I don't know if it was. I think it was their second. Maybe they'd done like one before that. But but we watched we watched them play that first gig, and I was just blown away. Well, we, we, our show was like for a three piece. Our show was like maximum gear for minimum impact. Yeah, our show was there's minimum, minimum gear. gear for for, I was just like, man. <laughs> How is the three piece coming up with this much sound? And it was just like, it was just something I'd never heard before. Really, I, I, I had. It, it made me kind of think that we we had tried to do a couple things at odd times and stuff like that, you know. And they had it successfully. Was, it was, it was just it. sort of eye opening to see to see what other bands because we, the bands that we've been playing with for the past months you know, over in, during the summer at Toscano's and, and Alpine Lounge and places like that was all. You know, spleen. Yeah. And, and high school, just fresh out of high school. Yeah. Fresh meat to the scene. So we, we were thinking we were all hot to try. Because we were new. Yep. But they were newer. Um, I heard a song, uh, it, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, so no one really is, is um, Heo Reo Nut Arade Unge or something. I don't know why I like it. I like. I guess I like the lyric, um, When Will You Ever Die? I think that's the lyric. Kind of watching John freak out on stage, and Jamie too.
some of the songs speak to me on a level which many, you know, rarely songs. I don't know, that's kind of a trite and contrived way of saying things, but like, you know, you have a song that you really like by some artist that's, you know, made it somewhere, and, uh, and you think, oh, I can really relate to that at this point, or I know someone, or something, and you can identify with the song. That's you know, kind of a, psychologically speaking, but some of the Special Zone Team songs, I don't find that, and the reason that it is, it's not in the lyrics, and it's really not in the composition. It's in the... Uh, it's in the package of the instrumental tone, which is kind of a w weird way of, of saying it, but you know what I mean? Yes. You don't, ass. <laughs> I'm so drunk. Um, please, please come back. <coughs> Hello. Hello. Because I do like a lot of special dental team music. But I don't. But I find myself often not liking the same songs as like other people that I talk to. Um, like, oh, this is my favorite team. This is my favorite special dance team song. I really like the way this bass line works. That was and I can see it, but I don't understand. I don't agree with the same. Major You know what I mean? I, it's, it's hard for me to describe. So what I don't like about special dental team in a sentence is uh, sometimes I find the combination of the instruments to be yeah. very touching harmony and other times the exact same instruments make a concophony that I it's intolerable. I don't know, I really enjoy the Richfield song and I think that I would like to credit myself on the fact that I could strong arm it into some performances. Maybe that's a lie, but is Not it really. do you remember how it was annoying about that? I can't the first kind of song. So the the Richfield song I really liked Partly because, was it the... <laughs> was it the what? Was it the movie? The movie, I think, I don't know if did that inspire the song or did the song inspire the movie? Something inspired something. That yeah, okay, know. well I really enjoyed being able to be inside that joke. Give me your hand. Yes, you are good. You are the rooster killer! You kill anyone on sight, except your mother, who is I. But I don't want you to kill just anyone. You know, I could send you to Japan, or to Magdan, but I only want to send you to Indianapolis, because that is where King Toledo lives, and you shall fuck him good. Mmm, Toledo. Now diveth into my map. Diveth! Diveth! Shrink! Yes! Yes! Cock a fucking doodle doo, King Toledo. Your mask is sexy! So are you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
one of my favorite special dental team songs is Mume <laughs> Yume because um, I feel it has a very um, international sort of feeling. Um, I like the the breakbeat section, the fact that it, it has a lot of dynamics. I really like the the melody of it. Um,
you was you, dude. I didn't even have to hear the fucking music. I saw you, dude, and I was like, I don't know. I just thought that like your music would probably pretty much suck because like I saw you swimming the guitar a couple times and I didn't really like. I thought, man, this guy fucking did. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of hokey pokey the stuff that you were playing out, and like I basically the show that you guys were playing at the common common party show. Um, I basically went to that because Alan asked me to. And when I went to it, I was like, oh, I'll just see this band. And, then, and I was actually very, very excited upon the fact of seeing you guys and being able to tell you how much you sucked afterwards. So I, I love telling people how much I suck when they suck. And uh, I was pissed off because I couldn't say that, man. They're my favorite band because they're my best friends. That song, Hello Sunny or whatever, is that what it's called? Sunny 16, whatever, you know? Hello Sunny. That song fucking sucks, dude. Uh, it just fucking sucks ass. But, it did reminisce me of some Talking Head stuff, which was kind of cool. Again, we kept playing shows. We played with Cephalic Carnage, which was really fun. We played with some great bands around Grand Rapids, Sombra and Demand at Arms and Frenchie Perlis, just to name a few, uh, Spit for Athena, etc. And uh, we began working on this new project, but before we crafted any kind of um, theme, we just kind of we just kind of wrote. We just kind of wrote. And some of the songs that came off off of that were uh, I've Always Only Wanted to Love You and Dress Up, Dress Down, uh, Cuddle and Muddle. And so after we realized we had enough material for a third album, we were, we were really happy 
and we thought, well, you know, this is going to be kind of the last thing we're going to do, so let's call it Career Ender. And we were going to play with the words and spell Rear, R-E-A-R, just because that had been like a theme in, in some of our newer songs. I'd have to say my favorite special now theme song um, is Dress Up, Dress Down. I think the, um, there's the energy this creates with the, the keyboard sound, especially live. I've not really heard it captured in any of the recordings or any of the, the video we have, but it's uh, definitely the most powerful song I think they've got.
said, no, I said, dress down. I discussed the other change of eye. I'm thinking good. I remember one show in which um, uh, John had gone to the bathroom to change into an outfit and uh, Jamie and Jason didn't really know what to start the show and they just started playing and, and for about three and then it seemed like four and then five minutes they were just playing something over and over again and slowly you know, building changes in it so it wasn't an absolute repetition. And then John comes out, emerged in a costume of various sorts and began to play. He was in, in not, not maybe three or four minutes more into the show and knocks the keyboard down. And it really um, set an example of, you know, how a show can go and how, even though it may seem to go badly, it can actually um, be a great performance. So I went to jail. So the story on that is that I was a poor person <laughs> and I got some tickets for not having insurance, amongst other things. And then eventually from not paying these tickets, I uh, had a suspended license. Um, judge. So, uh, <laughs> I want to name names. Um, it's not a very nice person. <laughs> uh, he uh, uh, sent me to jail. <laughs> Um, because I didn't have enough money to pay my bail that day, um, and because of my inexperience with the uh, uh, um, local justice system, I guess, um, I wasn't prepared for any of this, so I ended up spending two days in jail before we could uh, use all our band money to bail me out because we had a gig the next day. <laughs> um, so the guys in the band were nice enough to bail me out. Um, I would say that I now appreciate, um, really I would say fruits and vegetables more now because of special health team and really I think they help facilitate my commitment to smoking which I think, I think is great. We parodied a lot of different kinds of music on this, on this last album, Elephantum. And there were some, there were some good songs that they got, not that the songs were bad, it's, we just didn't work on them as, as as with as much diligence as we did the other two albums. Yeah, I, thought, I think that you guys are like really good. Like, yeah, so I don't can't name any of your songs or whatever. But I was very surprised because I thought that you guys were part of the you got the Grand Rapids music in general is a shitty music scene. There's two sets or two divisions of this shitty music scene. You get the mainstream shitty music scene, and you got the trying to be independent 
you know, uh, indie mainstream, but they're fucking failing miserably because they all suck ass or terrible reproduction duplications. And I could name some of those bands, but it probably would not be... Well, it would not be in my best interest because it's not like they can influence me or hurt me in any way. But I do have some, you know, heart. You know, I do... I don't like to totally diss people. You know what I'm saying? Some of the bands that you do associate with, I mean, for one, there's this band who, uh, that you guys are actually played with before, I'm pretty sure. And their fucking drummer was so terrible. I've never been to a show where I just, like, could single out someone. He reminded me of, he was, tra- he was being a bad imitation of a fucking animal from the Muppets. Floating World is my new favorite song. Um, now that I've heard the recording of it. Um... Basically, I mean, I love the I love the the horn parts. Just really made it, and it just made me say, "Wow, we played that. That's great." <laughs> Where am I? What kind of a horrible place is this? What have those two goons done with me? I'm frightened and scared. Sounds like he's awake. Yeah. Who? Who are you? We're asking the questions here. Where'd you stash it? Where'd I stash what? The Liber Cartarum. The library corner room? I got that from the library! That wasn't a library, that was a museum. Project, the way it turned out, and the 
communication between the band members. It's very productive. It's very constructive. We do a lot of work, um, but we flow really well. Uh, the flow is there. The the fluidity is there. We're able to come together and and create something surprising. Uh, each song, you know, is a different shade of Special Dental Team. Uh, each song is. You know, it's unique in its own way. I don't think we have two songs that sound sound alike, uh, and that's really beautiful. And the music is very challenging as well. It's very, very challenging. It's not easy uh, by any stretch. So it keeps us going. It keeps us on our toes. It keeps us uh, kind of alert. And, uh, you know, with that, with that in mind, uh, it's going to be something that's going to be missed. Because, you know, playing these songs live, performing them live, is difficult. It's not too easy. There's a lot of concentration involved and a lot of memorization. And, you know, coupled with, like, the visual, uh, it's, it, uh, it can be mesmerizing to perform these, these songs live. Uh, like I said, especially with our communication, I think we have good, good work ethic. Yeah, so I just thought you were contributing to the crappy, trying to be indie, non-mainstream music, but actually you guys are like good, which is really surprising, isn't it? And it kind of pisses me off because this is what I think is going to happen. I think that you guys, my impression with you is that you guys are like one of the awesome bands, you could be one of the great indie bands, you could be a band that, you know, they talk about the fucking madman and shit all the time, and I honestly think... I don't know if you guys know that. I don't think you guys know it, but I honestly think that what will happen with you guys is that you guys will not pursue your music much further, and that you guys will just fade before you could even, even, even shine any kind of bright lightness on the sky because of situations with people who are, you know, overseas and shit. I don't think you guys will get back, which is really sad. For the future of Special Dental Team, uh, maybe, you know, if we could get on a label. Uh, and make some kind of income playing music, that would be pretty wonderful, of course. I think the music's there. Um, we'll see. <laughs> okay, this is our last song. No! Ever! No! Play more! <laughs> Yeah.
We're all gonna die in the end. Anyway. Oh. Seriously, dude, come on. Hurry up. Hey, two. Hurry up. Two. Dude, I was in jail. You gotta pee right in front of ten other dudes. You want that tape? <laughs> Yo, Larry. Yeah, dude. Just don't show. Just don't show this. No, I don't show this. You're not. Don't look. Just you know what. 